This is Boston College wide receiver Zay Flowers. You can see him at the top of the screen here, gets a little bit of off coverage and has a lot of fight on this ball downfield. For somebody his size, he shows this ability a lot. Goes inside, back outside. Doesn't have a bunch of long speed. You see there's not that much separation, that much burst, but there really is no reason for somebody this small and somebody that doesn't have that much lake to be coming down with this type of pass. Can he do this in the NFL? The corner, yeah. I hear they do get a little bit bigger and a little bit faster. I have nine and a quarter, 182 pounds. But what I do really like about this first play is like you said, it's a two by two set and it's a late rotation by Louisville to a single high look. And in his head, he's like, well, crap, I got to run this corner post. And that means I got to work away from this outside corner, force him off, and then try to get on top of this single high safety and get over top of him. And he does, he does a really good job. Now, what we can keep coming back to when you're watching any Zay Flowers full game is this quarterback absolutely stinks, okay? A better throw would make this easier, but like you said, he shows that dog in him to leap up almost around the safety and take it on into the end zone. This is one of those fun evaluations where you have someone who played just 400 slot snaps out of 1,400 the last two seasons, has a slot body at 5'9", 182 pounds, but was used almost solely at times as a vertical player. I mean, 12 receptions this past year of 20 plus air yards. So did how he was used and the body type fit what he's going to be asked to do at the NFL level? I don't think so. And that's going back to that length, 29 inch arms. There's been 17 wide receivers in NFL combat history with that length. And a lot of them are slot receivers like Isaiah McKenzie. Uh, and for somebody of his size, his 40 time was decent, uh, 70th percentile, 4.42 speed. But there was very few times where I saw him like completely running away from guys, kind of wins with power and just a little bit of fight in him. Um, and they used Boston, Boston College used him in that capacity. He had 99 routes as the isolated wide receiver on them, 3.7 yards per route run. That's awesome for him. Now on those underneath routes, there was a couple drag routes where he's able to turn the corner and pick up some speed. But on like the traditional slants and comebacks and stuff, he wasn't that that effective. 1.8 yards per route run. I didn't see a whole bunch of agility from him. And I'm with you though. I think that he's going to have to go win in the slot. So now we're talking about, can he compete in a role that he hasn't really played, uh, but that's more built for his body size. Yeah, I love this play right here against NC State because it shows that if you get him on low pre-snap motion, just some movement ahead of time, we see this all the time in the league, and then basically three vertical routes to run off the coverage, it's a little drag, and instantly both defenders are behind him and can't catch up because I believe his movement is incredibly explosive early in his routes, but is less successful later on in his routes. Yet again, when you have this hybrid slot Z X at times in Boston College, he was asked to create separation on these breaking routes. And what that does is when the corner is bigger or longer, like I saw in 2019 when going back to his game against Sauce Gardner, he almost gets swallowed. I'm not going to say I wish he played like JSN and in that same spot over and over and over again. It would make the evaluation a bit easier to be able to do that because I, I think he could have been much more productive if his average depth of target was much lower at BC. In three wide receiver sets, I would want him uh, inside the slot. I think there's some packages where you can try him out kind of like in this Christian Kirk type of role where it's a vertical slot option. Uh, can play in two wide receiver sets, but I'm not sure if he's, that's really going to hold that up. I think it's like Sky Moore from last year was kind of a similar type of profile, kind of caught in between. You saw some yards after the catch ability, but ultimately at 4-4 at that size, you're not really running away from the defenders or running through them. You're kind of caught in between. So that's my fear with Zay Flowers. The other thing is his production profile was very hit and miss. Obviously, the quarterback play has really held him back, but ultimately 57th percentile yards per team pass attempt, 44th percentile age adjusted team adjusted production per my metrics. And he's not an early declare. He's been at Boston College forever. He was only a three star recruit. This has been the Boston College offense. He knew what he was signing up for when he went there. And he's uh, going to be 22.7 years old. He's going to have some snaps as a 23 year old rookie. So those are the, the cons against him. And that's why my model really didn't like them. 76th yeah. percentile. That's assuming uh, first round draft capital too. So I'm mostly out on him. The, the numbers and kind of some of my concerns about uh, NFL fit uh, are my primaries. And I know PFF charted him with nine drops this season as well. The people love him though, Hayden. They I mean, really the comparisons do. are flying and he's getting all pro comparisons. Like one we've heard a lot is Antonio Brown, you know? 
guy who's like 5'10 and 200 pounds, which by the way is a pretty stark difference from 5'9 and a quarter, 182 pounds for a guy that's rocked. And maxed out, maxed yeah. out at it. So I, I would say just from a size standpoint, can't go on board with those. But what I do love, again, is just that toughness he brings, snap in and snap out. Like when he becomes a runner, he becomes a runner, mm -hmm. you know? He transitions from a catcher to I'm going to square up. He loves to put his shoulders parallel to your shoulders and try to beat you one on one in a phone booth. And he does it a lot. Did have different three different OCs and three different wide receiver coaches during his time at Boston College. But yeah, I mean, there were some screen looks and there were some vertical looks and like not a lot in between. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, my biggest thing, and it's something he can't fix. The first time he steps on a field in preseason, I think everyone who loves him or doesn't or just watched him at BC is going to say, man, he looks small out there. Yep. Because he and is. That, that That's just anecdotally and just me visually. I don't think it shows up as much in college, but as soon as he touches the NFL field, he's just going to look so much smaller than he does right now. The good news is, like you said, near the sideline, he does create enough separation out there and his body control, uh, I thought was very, very good for somebody of his size. And he's gonna definitely going to play bigger than his size, but I'm with you. When when you pl play man coverage on the outside, how is that going to look? Because he doesn't have 4-3 speed, he's got 4-4-2 four, four, speed. And what's that going to look like? I think like Sky Moore, Isaiah mm. McKenzie, Christian, Kirk, that's kind of the, the range I'm I'm looking at. My model calls him a second round pick. I put a late second round grade on him. I think you're hoping that he's a number three wide receiver, and I really do not understand the Antonio Brown uh, upside comps. I just don't see anything uh, really about that. And the last thing about his film is I think he's an okay route runner, but he's very chaotic and everything's full speed. But I think that leads to the drops that you talked about and his yards per route run against man coverage only at 2.4 yards. Cause I'm not sure if he has all that agility and bend and proudness. Maybe it goes back to the coaching staff, but for somebody that is a little on the older side, I didn't see a whole lot of nuance to his game. I saw good ball tracking, good fight for it, good yards after the catch ability. But anything in between, like you said, I didn't see a whole lot of separation. That Sauce Gardner video, you see a lot of big arms coming around over his body. Yeah, yeah. it's it's one, hopefully people have watched our Jackson Smith and Jigba video where he manipulates the defender in close situations constantly, mm -hmm. whether it be stutter steps, whether it be his eyes, whether it be just like push offs. And you don't, I don't think you see that either route manipulation or defensive back manipulation from Zay Flowers as much. And just to speak on comparisons, I'm on a conquest to get rid of Pro Bowl, All Pro, Hall of Fame comparisons for every single player in each class. And so you're gonna hate mine out there because I'm bringing it all the way back to like 2008 Eddie Royal, who had over a thousand scrimmage yards with Mike Shanahan and Jay Cutler. And then his second season when everyone was buying into what Eddie Royal was gonna be, it went off a cliff with Josh McDaniels and Cal Orton. But he had that same obviously production concerns and almost same vertical ability at Virginia Tech, but everything was built off of that and expanded on once he got to the NFL and just their movements and their size are almost mirrors and one to one to me. So go and watch Eddie Royal, all of you, that's your homework for the evening. And if you're a Gen Zer, I think that there was like some of these similar issues <laughs> with like uh, Jalen Rager, who like didn't have the size, but he was winning on the outside. That's how he was winning in, at, at TCU. But the quarterback kept missing him. The production fell off a cliff. And then ultimately you're like, where exactly is Jalen Rager actually yeah. winning in the NFL? I, that's my, my biggest concern with him. But at the same time, like this dude loves football. This dude put on a bunch of weight. He looks jacked out there and you can see all these plays going up, making catches that he has no business making. I'm just concerned that that was happening against ACC and not yeah. against uh, Sauce Gardner, for example. It's such a shame that he was asked to be the clear out player a bit too often. A shame that when he was open, intermediate and deep, this jerk of a quarterback would take like a five yard check down on third and 12 instead of giving him a shot. And it's a shame that we didn't get more of those plays like against NC State, where his clear outs get the ball in his hands and ask him to manipulate after the catch, where he squares up and gets to the corner and reels off these big plays. Man, people love him and I like it. This is a fun type of evaluation. When players like this break the mold and maybe do become pro bowlers or all mm -hmm. pros, you take notice because they change the position. Go and draft Safe Flowers right now on Underdog Fantasy. It is fancy football, but without all the hassle, without all the roster and lineup decisions, all you do is draft and rookies are included right now and speaking of those rookies yep go and watch all these videos on the channel we have the whole wide receiver class coming up running backs quarterbacks as well and we welcome the dynasty community best ball is not just for redraft people dynasty people you'll love it too we will see you all next time <laughs>